unfortunate pronoun trouble, and our team coachman with the bird. <laughs> Welcome to the Royal Albert Hall for a special command performance of the very first ever Top Gear. Tonight, while the lovely ladies in the front row enjoy high tea, we'll be showing you the very latest in gear-driven technology. From pocket watches that do everything but tell you the time of day, to airships capable of actually flying across the channel. Uh, but first, our impresarios gave us each a couple of pounds and told us to buy the best used Babbage difference engine that we could find. Only we discovered that they didn't exist. But that didn't stop us. We found three used steam engines made by Charles Babbage's younger brother, John. Uh, little is known about John Babbage other than that he built a steam engine, uh, three of which coincidentally survive to this day. We have obtained the original patent application, and it's quite fascinating. Uh, rather than use a piston to drive the works, John Babbage hit upon the innovative idea of using actual pits. Uh, uh, hold, hold it, hold it, James. It's, there's a smudge in the patent application. It, it seems that it was just a garden variety bog standard piston engine. But look at mine, would you? See, I'm attached it to a gypsy caravan, and it's actually been modified to run on... Uh, hold, hold on a minute, lads. Uh, it's a note from the impresarios. It seems the queen was not amused and has asked us to move on to the next segment. What? What? The queen is here? It is a command performance, James, and she's shocked at the state of your flannel waistcoat. And now, let's move on to the next device. A Mr. Wells has presented us with a sleek, shining device for testing. Now, just look at this. A specialized gearbox, leather seat, and a custom brass console fitted out with an astounding array of levers, dials, gauges, and indicators. Oh, and look! There's also a cylinder machine for audio entertainment. It's capable of slipping into the fourth dimension and going from uh, uh, now to 60 BC in under 8.5 seconds. Uh, yes, it's the new time machine. Yes. Now this uh, quite fascinating thing about the time machine is the power source. Now you look under the bonnet, Stored electricity. A conveyance powered from light and jars? It'll never catch on, you know. Uh, but what if the driver gets to the future and there's no coal? Good point, James. Still, uh, uh, that's an amazing contraption. And we know that there's only one man who could test it. Some say he visited the coffin of Dracula himself for a steak dinner. That he has actually had a look at the Royal We. Hold on. Let me finish the Royal Wellingtons. All we know is that he's called the Stig. And there he is, uh, dazzling as usual in his white evening dress, opera cloak, and matching Venetian mask. Uh, the Stig is crawling into the time machine, closing the hatch, starting up the mechanism, Flipping the fantastically designed bird shaped ignition switch. Yes, flipping the bird as promised. And <laughs> it's gone. Just like that. Yes, and with that, it's time to put a star in our reasonably priced carriage. <laughs> it's the new Empress from the Orient, priced at only seven pounds, three shillings, and sixpence. Our star is an American, but we won't hold back against her, because her rich contralto voice has charmed thousands around the world. And, Strand Magazine is to be believed, the only woman ever to best Sherlock Holmes. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Irene Adler! 
Now, I have here a copy of the latest number of The Strand, and in it, you are, in fact, referred to as the late Irene Adler? Only in the fashionable sense, my, my son, my dear, my dear man. Then the rest of the story? Oh, oh, literary license. My manager contacted Dr. Watson's literary agent, and we agreed. So it was a publicity ruse? Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Well then, did you or did you not get the better of the great detective? Sir, I never kiss and tell, particularly when Her Majesty is present. Um, uh, yes. Well, well then, um, how do you think you did in our reasonably priced carriage? Oh, I must say the Stig was absolutely masterful with his instruction. He has a way with a riding crop. In fact, <laughs> well, speaking of our team, coachman, it's time to check in on the stick. Uh, yes, we have an ether excited audiogram direct from the cockpit of the machine. Let's listen. I'm very good at integral and differential. I'm very good at the integral and the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> Yes, that's the Stig, always listening to classics. <laughs> and now, let's look at your lap time. You did our cobblestone test track in... Oh. Uh, our test track in one hour, 48 minutes. 48 minutes, 17.5 seconds, which I'm sorry to say does not beat the record Still held by Benjamin Disraeli. Still, it's a good run. And here's hoping you have a good run at the La Scala Opera House next month. Ladies and gentlemen, the woman, Irene Adler. Look, everyone, the stick has returned. Is it a record time? We can't answer that until we know how far it's been. And sadly, this isn't a production model time machine, so the time can't go on the board. But still, it's an amazing bit of construction, this. I'm looking through the portable. Ouch, it's hot. I don't see anyone in there. Stand back. The door is opening of its own accord. I think you're wrong there. The, the accord hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> The cockpit is empty, but there's a note. Greetings from the year 2011. You'll be pleased to know that Top Gear is one of the most popular programs in the world. Well, that'll help in contract negotiations. <laughs> they needed a new Stig, so I decided to stick around. Well, that's a shame. Yeah, but he's in the future. I wonder if they have flying coaches. Wait, there's more. Tell the queen that our queen has a message for her. The doctor is not a... Oh dear. I don't know if I can say that word in polite society, particularly in front of Her Majesty. <laughs> Ooh, no, can't say that. Not in 1899. What, the wanker? <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, as the queen ascends from the box to come greet us, no, I, I think you'll see she's leaving the building. Uh, that's the palace guard coming our way. Well, then it's goodbye from Royal Albert Hall. Join us next week at the Music Hall in Manchester, if we make it that far. <laughs>
And now, please welcome a man who is a father of two and a disappointment to many. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Whitewater. If it had boobies, I would marry it, okay? I would, I really would. Which I think is legal in Texas, actually. <laughs> but here's the thing, I love the sexy part of science fiction, the easy part. I love watching movies. I can do that, no problem. Go in, see it, you're out. Reading, it's not my thing. Is that like the world's most laziest brain? Which that tells you right there. It's like got a gut, sweatpants, can't do anything. I start reading a book, it's like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> a paragraph? Oh God, no. Well, slow down there, Honors English. Okay, can we, uh, can we get that on movie? Or book on tape? What about a Wikipedia entry? No? Oh! Help a brother out. Uh, it's, it's hard, so, it's so hard, uh, I just can't do it, and I kind of forgot where I was. Hi, how's it going? Hey, how about the Rene Dio Generic Workshop? Yay! No, that's what I hate is, I hate that, and I also hate people that can read a book like that in a weekend, okay? I can't do that. In a weekend, I can do this, and it better have pop-ups, okay? <laughs> Stickers! Woo! <laughs> Limited edition. Um, yeah, uh, so. You always get a rehearsal. Um, yeah, so. Um, Alright, I'll tell you what. Hey, do you have any MILFs out here tonight? Any MILFs? Or musicians I like to filk? Anyone? Huh? Where are my MILFs at? If you like milk, there's no milk, there's no filkers in here. No filkers. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Cause I'm gonna be at the all night filk circle later on tonight. And I tell you what, if you're going to the all night filk circle and you tell your friends who are not at the convention that you're going to the all night filk circle, please enunciate. You're going to where? Your wife lets you do that. And those people are blonde and they can smell. I'm like, uh, all right. Um, but my favorite thing, my favorite thing about FedCon is the con suite. Oh, I love it. Because you go in and they have hot dogs and chili and chips and candy and soda. Oh, it is like a fat person crack house in there. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, give me that hot dog. Oh, Oh, that's good hot dog. Oh. oh, I can't feel my left arm. No, wait, that's a stroke. Oh, I love it. Um, you get all that, and you don't even, all you have to do is donate for like a little as a buck. That is it. Okay? That totally beats the pants off McDonald's, McDonald's dollar value menu, okay? Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm leaving you. <laughs> so. Yeah. The only thing I hate about that is I hate the veggie plate. It does feel a little judgmental, especially those damn baby carrots. And they're like, hey, looks like you had a little too much hot dog. You might want to eat it off. Hey, your blood cholesterol level looks a little over the legal limit. Hey, knock it off, baby carrots. No one likes you. Okay? I'm praying for your soul. Stupid. 
taping if he cares. Although then afterwards, afterwards, then I weigh myself and I'm like, ugh, I get a little bracelet, a little WWBCD. What would baby carrots do? <laughs> they would go jogging. Um, and uh, costumes, love the costumes here. Everybody's doing a great job. Fabulous. So here's the thing, you people aren't going far enough, okay? You need to leave tonight, leave the convention center, or leave the convention, go out, go to a bar, <laughs> wait till it closes, and save a life. How? I'm gonna tell you how. You wait till the, the drunkest person walks out, and you beat the living tar out of them. Because when their friends find them, and they go, what happened? I was like, oh, I was beat up by a transvestite Jack the Ripper, and the car from Knight Rider. Oh! Brother, they're going to be in AA the next day, and you have saved a life. <laughs> Just going to tell you a little bit myself. I'm horrible. Do it yourself or DIY, or as my wife likes to call it, no! <laughs> like, no. You burned the cat. No, she, she doesn't like it. I'm horrible at it. I know I'm horrible at it. You know who's good at it? My neighbor. You know how I know? Because he tells me every time he does something. Hey, Barry, this weekend I installed a three-foot-long marble countertop in my kitchen. I did it myself. I saved about $500. You want to come take a look at it? I would love to, but I am just so sleepy because I just installed a 12-inch tub into my gut. <laughs> Price? Five. Five, five dollar foot long. <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> and the other thing is, he borrows my tools half the time and he makes way better stuff. Hey, Barry, thanks for the use of that table saw. I just made a bookcase for my bedroom. I don't have any books, but it's awesome! <laughs> you know what I can make with that same table saw? I can make a longer board shorter. <laughs> I have a template. <laughs> I can make a week and disappear with nothing to show for it. <laughs> and I can make it to Ikea in 30 minutes and buy those same shelves I was trying to buy. <laughs> How many of those shelves you need? I need three. Three shelves. <laughs> <laughs> my last thing I want to talk about tonight is, you know what? I think my wife's trying to kill me. Because here's the thing, all she watches is Dateline. 2020 snapped. It's all the shows where men and women are trying to kill their spouses. Shouldn't be a big thing, but she's taking notes. <laughs> she's like, watch it, just like, mm-hmm, let's see. Uh-huh, soundproof trunk, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm, soundproof trunk. Cinnamon will hide the smell of a dead body. Mm-hmm, gotta get lots of cinnamon, mm-hmm. Honey, yes, I love you. Marry for money next time. <laughs> I know, I get all paranoid. And I just worry about it. You know what, I talked to her boyfriend, he said, listen, my friend. <laughs> you, you're just reading into this too much. I don't want to believe him, but his dreamy eyes, they're just so blue. His biceps, they're not really that big. You know, but you know, I talked to him. I was at the grocery store, I was picking up powdered sugar donuts, he's picking up cinnamon. You know what, I think it's all gonna work out. Thank you very much.